There's nothing quite as tasty as a little old video bite. Little old video, little old video, little old video bite. Well, we're here with Cameron Urari. Tell us a little yes. bit, who is Cameron Urari? Where did you Cameron? come from? <laughs> I was born in Iran, yeah. and I was raised in Iran until I was 30 years old, then uh -huh. I left Iran. And you know, normally when you say Iran, people get so afraid that, oh, that's the evil country, and evil is there, and people are, are unsaved. But that's another story that which, which we can share we little will by talk little, about, yeah, that how sure. the Lord picked our family, and he's yeah. picking so many different families, yeah. and he just literally changed our life. And yeah, I was born in Iran, and then I had a very strong encounter with the person of Jesus when I was not looking for him. Mm. I was really looking and searching Allah. Then Jesus came out of nowhere and just changed my life. And yeah, my tell us life. about that. That's a... And growing up, I had this very strong desire to become, specifically, become friend of God. I was not interested to go to heaven. I mean, of course, I knew God is in heaven and I'm going to see him. Mm -hmm. But the desire, a strong desire was just to really walk with God Almighty and become his friend. Mm -hmm. And in Islam, it's not available to you. You cannot walk with God mm -hmm. and you cannot really become friend of God. But the desire was there and I could not get rid of that desire. Mm -hmm. And when I was 12 years old, I started to pursue God. First, I start to ask my mother some question. Mm -hmm. Growing up, then I started to ask religious leaders some question about how can you really become friend of God? Mm -hmm. And of course, nobody knew because you couldn't find friend mm -hmm. of God in Iran. Those days, I'm talking about when I was 12 years old, that was mm -hmm. 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. Islamic regime was there. There wasn't any satellite TV. We had just a normal TV that government would offer, Channel 1, Channel 2, all Islamic uh, teaching. Mm. No cell phone, mm. no internet. We did not have any access to outside world. It was all the teaching that we received, uh, mm. which was, you know, you go to mosque, especially mm -hmm. on Friday. Mm -hmm. You respect Allah, you respect all the prophet, mm -hmm. and you do five time prayer, prayer of the day. Mm -hmm. People that they become really fanatic and really strict, then they go to another category. They read the scripture in Quran that says you have to kill the infidel. Mm. You know, but not all people are like that. In Iran currently mm. now, I can say 10% or less than the population, they are like that. Mm -hmm. I was not in that category. I was in the category of that I want to become a friend of God. Mm -hmm. Since 12 years old, I try so hard, Rick. Everything mm. I could do, I mm -hmm. did it. Mostly was inside mm -hmm. me, and I had no idea even that is available. As a Christian, we don't know how blessed we are. Mm -hmm. Even our six years old can say, you know, I felt God, mm -hmm. or God spoke to my heart. Mm -hmm. That is not available in Iran, especially those days. And I grew up with a very deep agony in my heart to know God not to go to heaven, to know God and to be his friend. Mm. It was a very deep agony, which I really strongly believe it's the agony of God I was feeling. Mm. He wants to be friend, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. I mean, I'm sure as a parent, your agony, if I could say agony, is that I want to be closer to my children. I wish mm. my children would understand my heart, which mostly children will misunderstand mm -hmm. the heart of the parent. You would say, mm. I wish. You could understand me, but I, even if I sit you down and I tell you my heart, you will not understand me. Mm -hmm. You may think I'm old fashioned or I don't understand about you. I really, I was feeling the agony of God. Yeah, God's feeling like that about his children. Yeah. His children, yeah. which is every single person in the planet, you know, mm -hmm. he wanted them. I always say for a parent, for someone that they get married, before they get married, sometimes they think about their children. That mm -hmm. means their children already are living in their heart. Mm -hmm. Same thing with our God. It doesn't matter in Iran or Pakistan or America. God is really looking for friends, mm -hmm. and that is not offered in any other religion. Mm -hmm. I can't be friend of God if it wasn't because of the blood of Jesus, but I did not know that. And I went through this agony until I was 30 years old. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You know, the, I remember I was in Denmark 
one time and uh, ran into an Iranian, had the same thing, didn't know uh, God or Jesus, anything, but yes. he just says, I want to be his friend. I want to know him. And there was no resource. He actually got persecuted and almost killed because of mm. desires that were not considered, you know, mu yes. Muslim. Yes. And, uh, but are there many more in Iran that have the same desire to just know God and be his friend? And I think for some reason, the Lord ahead of time, maybe he wanted to use me in this area. He stirred me way longer, way yeah. before than he stirred people. Now people, last 10 years, uh -huh. are being stirred and have the same agony that I carry right now. Mm -hmm. They want to be a friend of God. They're yeah. really looking for something. And mm -hmm. it's our God, the person mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ, really stirring the whole country. He's mm -hmm. doing it. Yeah. It's not because any satellite TV show. There are satellite TV shows which I'm involved just to feed that hunger. But the mm -hmm. hunger, to something answer your question. Something is emerging there. It's in whole Middle East. The hunger is there. Amen. The Lord, that's why, you know, they're, especially the young one, they're saying this is not working. Yeah. This Islam is not working. And, you know, when I, I, I had a vision of the coming harvest and a panoramic vision back in 1987, I wrote about in the book, The Harvest, he showed me some of his greatest apostles and prophets in the last days were going to come out of Islam. Islam. They're going to be trans, and they're going to have the same passion, willingness to sacrifice, pay any price. But these would be some of the greatest at the end. Yes. I think this is happening. Read the, you just share with me the scripture yes. from Jeremiah. Yes. That, uh, Jeremiah 49, 38. I will set my throne in Elam, present day Iran, declares mm. the Lord. Mm. When he declares that, it's yeah. going to happen. I will set my throne in Elam. Elam, Iran, yeah. declares the world, and literally mm -hmm. that is happening yeah. right now. But what is really interesting, maybe some people say, oh, but we have an evil government in Iran. More Persians have come to Christ in the last 33 years mm -hmm. since Ayatollah Khomeini came, mm -hmm. since the Islamic uh, revolution, than in the last 1400 years that Islam came. Isn't that incredible? It's amazing. Isn't that incredible? You hear the fastest growing church right now. Body of believers in the world is in Iran. In Iran. Fastest yes. growing. Right now. That means yeah. nobody did it. Again, it's not because of anybody's work. The Lord prophesied, mm -hmm. and in this our modern time, He stirred the heart, He created hunger, and He's feeding mm. the hunger. Mm. And hopefully that will even happen more among us in America and in our Western yeah. society. It should be making us jealous. That Yes, that the Lord would stir yeah. that hunger, that then the, he would just feed that hunger. And I really believe the more we get involved in feeding his children, you know, in, mm -hmm. you know, in Middle East, then the more we will be blessed and we will receive the benefit as mm. well. Yeah, isn't that encouraging? We're going to be right back with Cameron Urari, and there are some truly remarkable things going on today. You know, the, the book of Acts, they may have, Luke may have finished re writing the book of Acts yes. in the first century, but God's Acts, what God is doing has not ceased. I think some of the most remarkable things of all he is doing today, and we're going to be talking about some of those incredible things that our God is doing among an incredible people. We'll be right back. Well, we're here with Cameron Urari. Been talking about, you know, your hunger. You grew up as a young man in Iran, and you um, had this desire to be God's friend in the pursuit. Now, you met him. We kind of jumped ahead a little bit, but tell us about your actual conversion to Jesus Christ. How did that happen? Uh, it happened in... I can say in three stages, uh -huh. and it took three years. Yeah. The first stage was when I was so disappointed. I was 30 years old. I was so disappointed, and I said, since I was 12, I pursued Allah to become his friend. I am 30 years old. Nothing happened. Again, I had a desire in my heart to just go to the United States to come here because my mom's sister came here long before me, 1984. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about 1996 that I said, let's just go to U.S., and just become somebody else. Mm -hmm. I watched some Hollywood movie. Of course, you couldn't watch it on TV. You had to 
it was illegal to watch an American movie. You would just go mm -hmm. get the tape, put it in a VCR. Mm -hmm. If the government would find out that you had VCR, they would come to your house. They would, you know, get your VCR and you might be end up in prison. Mm -hmm. anyway. And then I said, let's just go to America. It looked like a very nice country. You know, I never mm -hmm. hated America. Most mm -hmm. Persians, they don't hate America. Mm -hmm. It's the government. I said, let's go there and just start my life new because my heart was shattered. Mm -hmm. Literally shattered. You, know, you just imagine you're 12 years old. You have this great desire to be friend of God. And you're 30 years old and you didn't get it. And you thought you would get it. Mm -hmm. I went to Cyprus without being able to speak English. Mm -hmm. I went to this hotel and I was planning to go to American embassy to get visa to come to United States and start my life new mm -hmm. without really money, without anything. But mm -hmm. I, the only thing I did carry, it was a strong desire. Mm -hmm. That's such a gift. When God gives a strong desire, that's all we need mm -hmm. to have. And that's mm -hmm. all, all I had. Mm -hmm. I told some of my close friends, they were laughing that, sure, you go to America. America doesn't give visa to Persian. Mm -hmm. And of course... I don't blame them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because of what happened, you know, yeah. with hostage and stuff like this. I go to uh, Cyprus. I go to this hotel next to the embassy of the United States. I am there. I cannot speak the language. The hotel clerk, he could speak a little bit of Farsi. I was so hopeless, Rick. I had mm -hmm. no hope in this planet. I was at the end of myself. I mm -hmm. didn't really have money that much also. I didn't have that much education too, mm -hmm. but I had great desire to pursue my relationship with God, but then it didn't happen. Now I said, I'm going to go and become somebody else. But the desire was so strong mm -hmm. there. I'm walking at the lobby of the hotel and I see a Bible for the first time, a small New Testament mm -hmm. Bible, mm -hmm. so humble looking for some reason. It was sitting there and I asked the hotel clerk if I could read that book for the first time in my life i saw bible which mm. we've been taught that the bible you christian they corrupted the bible those days this yeah. is 1996 mm. everything is changing now and i went to my room i started to read the bible i opened the bible book of matthew i never laid on eyes on bible mm -hmm. and i read about the story of the person of jesus christ which we knew he was a normal prophet it touched mm -hmm. my heart and I said, wow. And after a while, as I'm reading the word Jesus Christ, which is in all languages, Isa Masih, mm -hmm. the, word, the word and the ink literally jumped out of the book, literally. Mm. I didn't know those days you could have a spiritual experience. I'm mm. running away from Allah. Mm -hmm. And the word Isa Masih jumps out of the book, goes to the ceiling, and I look at the word, and I look at the ink, and comes back to the Bible and lands into the Bible. Mm. And I kept reading. The second time, same thing happened. Jesus Christ, Isa Masih, jumps out of the book, goes up to the ceiling, and jumps back into the book. Mm. Three or four times that happens as I was reading the story of Jesus Christ, Isa Masih. The last time I look up and I saw a man standing in my room, and I knew my whole body was saying, this is Isa Masih. Mm. Mm. And I could see him. Of course, the ceiling expanded. He looked at me, I looked at him, and I'm sitting on the floor. He speaks in Farsi, and he says, I will help you to go to United States of America. Okay. I look back, I look into my heart, and I ask my heart question. Can I pray to Jesus Christ? He's the prophet to Christian. Hmm. I'm a Muslim. Hmm. Then I got angry. I mean, my, my emotion started to stir, and I look up, I said, Jesus, all other prophets, they never ever helped me. If you can help me, please do. Mm. And I went back, mm. kept reading the Bible like nothing happened. The Lord did not allow me to get so excited and say, this is a miracle. I go to the embassy of the United States and they granted me my visa <laughs> the same day and they handed me the passport after two hours. That is um no question a miracle. That was the first one. <laughs> yeah. But you know, guess what? I did not thank Jesus. I said, thank you, Allah. It looked like after so many years, you heard my prayer. Mm. Because I thought, you know, Jesus is one of the prophets. I need to go and ask, uh, thank the big boss, Allah. Yeah. That was the first encounter. Mm. Second encounter, I come to U.S. And I started to read the Bible. Bible made me very angry because Bible said, Jesus is the son of God. 
-hmm. I had problem. That's blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Then when I read the book of John, it did it for me. I got so angry. I threw the book to the wall. I said, Jesus, these Christians, they corrupted your book. I cannot mm -hmm. do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Next time, it was after three years. I was living in Atlanta. I met some Christian and they told me about the love of God. I said, mm -mm, God is not love. I loved him and I wanted to be his friend. They kept telling me these were spiritual Christian. Mm -hmm. God is love. They told me about the power of the Bible, power of the scripture, power of the blood of Jesus. Literally, I want to be honest, as they were talking to me, I thought this is foolishness. Mm -hmm. You guys are fool. You're just mm -hmm. fooling yourself. This is not good. We Muslim, we know what we are talking about. We even with our prayer, we never could reach God. And you are telling me everything is free. God died for me. I cannot do this. And should I go on? Yes, okay. please. Yeah. And I remember I was talking to one of my friends and she was telling me about Jesus and even talking about Satan too. Mm -hmm. I brought Satan up. How about Satan? If God could, you know, he could mm -hmm. crush his head. Why he didn't do it? She said, he did crush his head. You know, he came here <laughs> through the cross, but not through work and fighting. And it didn't make sense. But I was crying so hard. My heart was broken. I said, tell me, how can I pray to Jesus? Not to believe in him. I want to talk to him. She told me the salvation prayer in America. We have, mm -hmm. I was, I was being honest. I wasn't being rude. I said, I cannot pray this prayer. When the Muslim, they reject us. They're not being rude. They're being honest. I, mm -hmm. I can't do this. I can't believe God mm -hmm. has son because it's blasphemies against my, you know, my whole culture. And you know, this is the way I grew up. Mm -hmm. But I said, but the key was they kept telling me God is love. That's a big key. And I said, I don't believe what you're saying, but I'm going to pray with my own language. I remember this is what my, my prayer was. Jesus, I don't believe you are the son of God. But if you are, I give you my heart. I was telling Jesus the truth. I wasn't <laughs> lying. Absolutely. You cannot offend yeah. the truth, almighty God, yeah. with another form of truth. I was being honest. Mm -hmm. I said, but if you are, I give you my heart. Mm. And of course he was, and I took, he took my heart. Mm -hmm. And I said, Jesus, I don't believe your blood has any power to forgive my sin. But if there is any forgiveness through your blood, please go ahead and wash my sins away. I want you to wash them away if mm -hmm. it was possible. Then I said, if you can build the relationship between my heart and the heart of God Almighty, who you claim he's your father, mm -hmm. I give you full permission from this moment on to do anything you want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. I got invited to a church, very large church in Atlanta. I felt Holy Spirit for the first time. Then I said, oh, this reminds me of mosque. That's what I'm, I just feel this good feeling. But I never had any good feeling anywhere, mm -hmm. you know, spiritual feeling, unless mm -hmm. Jesus appeared to me. Mm -hmm. Second time they invited me, I said, I want to go. Mm -hmm. Third time they invited me, I said to my heart, even if these Christians, they didn't invite me, I wanted to go. There is something there. Mm -hmm. I feel really good. And I went there and as the pastor was walking, I saw Jesus. He walked on air and he walked inside my heart and mm -hmm. my body was filled with fire and I was crying. I couldn't stop crying. It was such an amazing experience, mm -hmm. but embarrassing too, because I'm sitting in the first row and even my nose was running and I'm, it was a mess. <laughs> it was having an amazing encounter with the love of God, which made me to cry and I could not stop crying mm -hmm. and it was feeling my heart too. Another encounter, January 21st, 2000, when the Lord touched me in a church, I went through intense deliverance. And then all of a sudden I saw this milky spirit come from heaven, filled my body. And in that very moment, I knew this is whatever is happening right here. Mm -hmm. It's what I've been waiting for, searching for since I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Eric, it deep, deeply satisfied me, mm -hmm. deeply washed everything away, deeply answered all my questions. And when I stood up after that encounter, I knew Jesus is the son of God. I had no problem. Mm -hmm. I knew my whole body knew he was the one I was searching for. And mm -hmm. this happened in the year 2000. And it's been 14 years of walking with him and learning his love mm -hmm. and learning to love people. Wow. Isn't that an incredible testimony? And you know this. The same one who touched Cameron, touched us, and touched, I'm sure, many who are watching. And if you haven't had this experience, yes. though, 
he's available. And, uh, he, you know, I was recently with a scientist who, who said to me, this is one of the great physicists alive today, said to me, he says, I don't believe in faith. He says, I'm a scientist. I cannot help but to see God. He said, wow. any sincere scientist has to see God, has to see his work, has to see the creator. Keyword, sincere. I said, well, ask him his name and he'll show you. And uh -huh. he will. Uh -huh. He will. And, you know, we have been so blessed. We need to pray for the rest of the world that has not had the blessing that so many of us take for granted that we too could be the friends mm -hmm. of God, which is the calling on every one of us. Listen, you don't want to miss tomorrow's program with Cameron Uri. I'll see you then.